It's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China with my assistant Eddie, and we're going to show you grips that we're going to use for clinch fighting. The first grip you should know is a collar tie. You'll notice I'm grabbing the back of Eddie's head, not his neck, but his head, and here's why. If I grab Eddie's neck, he has control of his posture. Eddie, look up, look up, yeah, he can lift his head, he's very strong here, okay? If I grab his head, now look up. Now Eddie's trying very hard to look up, but I'm controlling the lever by the tail end, right? If I slip this hand down here, now look up, boom. Huge difference. And that's just a minor detail, but it's a very important one. Double collar ties, that's one hand over the other, right? Do not interlace your fingers like this. It's just one palm over the other, like a palm fist salute. You know, like that, right? Except one palm over the other. And I'm going to pinch my elbows in very tight, like a pair of scissors, like I'm trying to snip off his head. Even with a single collar tie, I will drive my elbow in deep under his, under his neck there. With a double collar tie, it's both of them. Now here's another very important detail about the collar tie. When I grab one, I won't try to pull Eddie, because here, Eddie, pull away from me. Pull away, pull away. And I'm trying to arm wrestle his head into my shoulder. It doesn't work that way. Here's something easier. Bring your shoulder into his head, okay? So if I grab these, these collar ties and try to pull Eddie into me, it won't work, he'll fight back. He's got space. So instead, pull yourself into your opponent. It's very simple. Grab, pull your shoulder in, there you go. And keep your head very close to his head. When we clinch, this is a very important concept. If my head is out here, one, I've given him a bunch of space. He can hit me any way he wants. Boom, 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 knockout city, right? If my head is close to his, here, Eddie, punch me please, hit me. Now, I'm gonna mitigate a lot of damage simply because I'm very close to him. Who has that boxer hit himself with an uppercut? Was it, um, heavyweight champion? Crazy fight, I'm gonna find a clip of that. Anyway, he punched himself with an uppercut. That's, that's the rare exception to punch yourself. Most people will avoid that like the plague out of instinct. So bring your head very close to them, and it's going to be much harder for them to hit you. Okay? So double collar ties. I'm squeezing my elbows under his neck, almost like I'm trying to choke him. Okay? The next grip, reverse collar tie. So I've got my arm across here. Okay? It's my forearm. It's very important. Don't try to grab with the fingers. Hold with the wrists. Okay? So I'm turning my hands into hooks, like monkey grips. So I'm grabbing this, and as soon as you engage, we're pushing or we're pulling. We're moving the guy around with this, okay? Now we can assist the, the uh, reverse collar tie with, with uh, maybe a tricep grab. Notice I'm holding his tricep here. This is another grip. Bicep tie up, my palm over the bicep. Don't thumb block, this is very important. Get a very close look at this. Don't thumb block. If you do that, he's going to blast through your thumb and break it. You might end up injuring your thumb, and it's just weaker. You're trying to hold with your fingers. Don't. So instead, push your palm. Push the whole, all five fingers over the top there, right? Now I can push against the bicep, or I can pull against the tricep. Again, push, pull, like the old people in the park doing Tai Chi in the morning. It's, it's this motion right here. You've got your guard up, right? I reach in there. I've got a bicep tie up. Now I push and I pull. It's, it's this exact motion, okay? So this right here, bicep tie up, collar tie. Those together can be very strong. Also, this can allow me to elevate this arm, exposing, boom, his side for a knee, right? So I'm over here, right? His guard is up. I pummel in here. I elevate, boom. Strike to the side right there. Liver shot. Boom. Come in there. Right. He's probably going to fight to bring this arm down to protect his body. Right. In, in which case, now I can come up into a full tie plume, the double collar ties. Whip him around to that side. Boom. Midsection. He's probably going to start protecting his midsection, bring the arms down. In which case, boom, we're going to come up higher. Right. So it's a high, low sort of thing. Underhooks. Now we need to take caution reaching for underhooks, especially in a Muay Thai fight because of the elbows, right? Say Eddie's reaching for an underhook. As soon as I feel, boom, as soon as I feel that arm coming in under the body, boom, 
If the elbow is one of the best counters, if he's reaching with that hand, boom, slide that elbow over the head, right? If I'm reaching here, again, I'm not, not controlling the elbow. So same side as the underhook right there. Boom, exactly. If I'm reaching on this side, same side as the underhook. Boom. Okay? Now, if we're a little too late to counter, we can do what's called a wizard. So grab an underhook there, and that's just wrapping my arm around here. That gives me a huge measure of control over his shoulder. There's a simple way out. Here, relax your arm. Pull it out. Yeah, just relax, right? But a lot of people don't do that. They grab the underhook, they feel like, I have control. And then you wizard them and they're like, oh man, where did all the control go? But they keep holding on, right? Now the wizard can allow us to do some cool stuff like a three quarter Nelson right here. So he grabs an underhook, you can grab one on this side. I got a wizard, I got a reverse collar tie right there, and I connect them right there with a, uh, a wrist lock right here. A catch wrestling wrist lock, not Aikido wrist lock. We're not talking about this, this sort of deal, right, or this sort of thing. Right? In catch wrestling, a wrist lock, a double wrist lock is this. It's catching your own wrist, grabbing your own wrist, right? You might call that a figure four in jiu-jitsu, right? But he's got this, I've got this. Right, this is one of my favorite clinches of all time because I've got undefended shots to his head, his posture is broken, and I got this really nice throw right there. So here, one more time, he grabs an underhook. Right, I'm gonna count the wizard. Need him or throw him or both. Okay, and if it's an MMA fight, right, catch that, hold on to the arm, sit on him, right, and then We've got this arm locked up for uh, one arm more. Okay. We've got different combinations. We have the over-under clinch. This is a great clinch to set up different throws and takedowns from. Not the best striking clinch. I mean, I, I can knee the legs, right? I can get the body, but that kind of puts me at risk. If I knee the body up here, he might use this underhook to catch my leg. Boom. And now he's going to put me on the floor. Right? And we don't want that. So one of the best things I can do as far as striking here, boom, is knee in the thighs. This is much harder to catch. It's really annoying. He might lower his arm and allow me to arm drag and catch this. Okay? Speaking of which, the arm drag. Okay? Again, we're still using those monkey grips, no thumbs. Okay. So I move in here, I grab this arm right above the elbow and I pull. Okay, it's gonna move him a little bit. I can use this to move myself a lot, move behind him, right? We can do two on one, on drags, right? But in the case of striking, if you've got the boxing gloves on, okay? Maybe I'm moving to a clinch here. There's no holding in boxing, right? In Muay Thai, that's totally fine. So when I pull this, I release to strike him, freeing up this hand to throw a second, third, fourth shot, etc. Okay? So you know, arm drags are great because we can set those up in lots of different ways. Here's one I like, we'll go through his shell, press against him, right? And when he pushes back, right? I'll grip this right here, and hold still for a minute. I'll grip this right here. I will pull, release, and strike, and then fire off several more. So again, fire off some shots, really shell, pressure, arm back, and over the top. So this is a great way to expose the body. A lot of people don't know you can arm drag in boxing, but you absolutely can. So this is one thing I'd love to do with the Philly shell, right? Put pressure on him, quick arm drag. Shot over there. Now, if you're fighting from the other stance, right? Southpaw position. If you're fighting a southpaw, ooh, I love it when I fight for southpaws. Better yet, fake southpaws. Those dudes are the best. All right, so Eddie's pretending to be a southpaw. I love this because now I'll pretend to be a southpaw. Boom! Liver shots. All right, so again, if you got the southpaw in there, I love that. Because again, pressure from the Philly shell. And arm drag, liver shots. All right, little shot, come up high, pressure, give a shot. One of my favorite things to do. Okay, so let's review. Collar tie, double collar tie. And with the collar ties, we can move around, 
we can pull them down, we can bring knees up high, we can bring knees mid-level, we can bring knees down low, we can kick them up high from inside the clinch, and reverse collar tie. Right? We can use reverse collar ties in combination with other techniques, but generally we're going to do that to push and to pull, and also to frame. Maybe he's got double collar ties on me. Oh man, this sucks. But if I can bring one up in between, this is good. It's not like an elevate there. Oh. And find my way out right there. So if he has a single collar tie, for example, I grab a collar tie. I can grab my reverse collar tie here or here and open up the body right there. Okay, underhook. Double underhooks are good because you can lift and throw. Single underhooks are good because it gives you a lot of leverage. Okay. What else? Wizard, he has the underhook. I've got the wizard. Combine the wizard with the reverse collar tie to get the three quarter Nelson. Okay. Arm drags. Okay. What else do we have? Over under clinch. And we can move between these. So if I got an over under clinch, right? Look, I switch to a reverse collar tie to make some space. Boom, oh, throw a shot up there. All right, move over into a Muay Thai clinch. One alternative grip for double collar ties. I can use a gable grip. This is okay. Right? I like this one because it takes away a lot of the space. You've got a really strong guy who's really fighting back. If you got MMA gloves, this, this can be a good option. Just make a knot right behind his head right there and start kicking. Okay. And then from here, maybe he's fighting back. Here, pummel with me for a minute. Get those hands in the middle. Right. So generally speaking, we want these hands in the center. Right? And there are different ways to deal with this, like we're throwing body shots and knees and all this the whole time. And if it's an MMA fight, we're fighting through those legs, right? a Muay Thai fight, we're thinking about elbows, but be very, very careful in practicing those, thinking like headgear, elbow pads, this sort of thing. But I recommend doing a lot of clinch fighting. All that is, all that is like clinch sparring. Grab a partner like this. Um, we won't do it right now, but take the hand wraps off when you do clinch sparring, because this, this Velcro will start cutting up your partners. You can leave it on right now just for the demo, right? But save your partners the trouble, and I'll tell you why. Because you're going to go home with your neck all scratched up from the Velcro on this. And then your wife is going to come up to you and say, who gave you those hickeys on your neck? And you'll be like, it was Eddie at the gym. And then she's going to stare at you like, what are you not telling me? And you'll be like, no, no, you don't understand. It was from the hand wraps. No, that's not what you're thinking. Anyway, save your training partners a lot of trouble. Just take these off, do it barehanded. But we're going to demonstrate right now. Right? So... We're in a clinch, right? Fight for the dominant clinch, fight for the inside. Tag your partner, just touch with the knees. You can touch with body shots, that's okay. And you can do a couple of different rule sets. Right now we're, doing, we're thinking like Muay Thai rules, right? You can also kick the legs, that's okay. You can throw leg kicks in the clinch. Did you know that? You can even throw body kicks in the clinch, that's okay. As long as it's light, just kind of like touch. Now, let's do clinch fighting for like MMA, so you can grab the legs now. No, it's not just defending the upper body, it's defending the lower body too, right? So we don't have to finish the takedown, but if we can, if we can set up those leg grabs, yeah, that's good. Now we got like Russian two-on-ones. That's a different kind of grip. Do you know the Russian two-on-one? Here, he reaches for a collar tie, right? I elevate, I rotate, I grab this. He's probably gonna pull his arm in so I can get this nice little torsion knot to move him around. Right. I got videos all about that one. Go check that one out, right? But yeah, spend some time clinch fighting. You know, you can strike the leg. Boom. Boom. Got a whole video about that set up as well if you want. 